Hi everyone, welcome to the kids' table, um, where we pick a favorite book, pick a favorite page, and don't pick each other's noses. We are out in the woods today, one of our favorite places to be, um, and we are celebrating the 114th uh, birth, well, birth anniversary. month, yeah, birth month of White Fang. White Fang. Uh, we're also going to talk about um, the Call, Call of the, the Wild, Wild today. Both of these are by Jack London. And um, White Fang is special to both of us, especially Yeah, I you. grew up with it, one of my favorite books when I was mm -hmm. really little. Yeah, I read that to her. These books are really about for 12 and up, but um, I read this to you when what, you were about seven, seven <laughs> or younger. You, I don't know, I think you were li smaller because you Probably. were still in your toddler bed. Yeah. I think, yeah. And I yeah. would just skip, my, I would just special, simplify some of the My special toddler things. book, White Fang. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what? Part of White Fang are you going to read? Well, it's not particularly my favorite part, but I did like uh, how he just kind of how he writes. It, it was just an interesting way of White Fang sort of finding himself as a dog in a way because he's half dog and half wolf. So uh, White Fang was in the process of finding himself. In spite of the maturity of his years, of the savage rigidity of the mold that had formed him, his nature was undergoing an expansion. There was a burgeoning within him of strange feelings of unwanted impulses. His old code of conduct was changing. In the past, he had liked the comfort and surcase for, of, from pain, disliked comfort and pain. He had adjusted his actions accordingly, but now it was different. Because of the new feeling inside of him, he oftentimes elected discomfort and pain for the sake of his God. I'm reading from Call of the Wild, also by Jack London. Um, also Which about a dog. 117 years old now. 117 years old, yeah. Um, and it's, I think it's kind of appropriate to read these right now because I feel like we're all going a little feral. <laughs> I mean, you can tell from our hair. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just saying. We're eating right, this from the woods. And, yeah, and the main dog in this um, is Buck. I think he's half St. Bernard and mm -hmm. half Scotch Shepherd, something like that. Um, um, and what I think what's so cool about Jack London is he actually like gets into the heads mm -hmm. of the animals and writes from this very kind of yeah, primal. Yeah, very interesting set of beliefs. <laughs> uh, well, true, <laughs> but uh, um, also kind of like this very primal. Um, I think he wanted to be a dog based on if you read about him, he seemed like he yeah. wanted to be a dog. <laughs> true. There is an ecstasy that marks the summit of life, and beyond which life cannot rise. And such is the paradox of living. This ecstasy comes when one is most alive, and it comes as a complete forgetfulness that one is alive. This ecstasy, this forgetfulness of living, comes to the artist. Caught up and out of himself in a sheet of flame, it comes to the soldier, war mad on a stricken field and refusing quarter, and it came to Buck, leading the pack, sounding the old wolf cry, straining after the food that was alive and that fled swiftly before him through the moonlight. Mm 